Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Smarter Tomorrow podcast. I'm very happy to have you on here for yet another episode. As usual, I'm your host, Susan Wanjiku. Today, we are delving into the topic of home ownership, and we're going to be looking at it specifically from how do you actually do financial planning for home ownership. So if you've always wanted to own a home either right now or in the future, today we want to kind of like have a discussion around what are the options available for you to actually be able to find finance and to fund that dream of home ownership. As per usual, I've, I'm joined by a lovely guest, uh, Miss Mary Gashuhi. I'm very, very happy to have you on here. Welcome. Um, Mary is an expert in property financing, and she's going to just join us in this discussion to help us understand, again, what our financing options are. So Mary, you can just introduce yourself. Um, tell us a bit about you and what you do. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Again, my name is Mary Gashohe. I'm an expert in property financing. I've done that for the last over 14 years. And um, I have a background in banking and uh, lending and mortgages and all of things, all of the things pertaining to property financing. So I'm happy to join you on this. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm glad to hear that you handle property financing. Now, on this podcast, we talk a lot. We've discussed money so much and we've talked a lot about debt, right? And one of the things that always comes up is the topic of good debt and bad debt, oh. right? Um, so in home ownership, one of the exciting things about, um, you know, financing home ownership is that it's not one of the things that is considered bad debt. So one of the reasons I'm very excited for our conversation today is... Um, we are kind of like sharing information about how people can take better advantage instead of taking like, let's say, loans that are not particularly very helpful in our long-term financial journey. Today, we are delving into something that would really, really help us to be able to understand how we can use financing and how we can use debt to achieve that goal of home ownership, right? So when it comes to home ownership, we have different options of financing that particular dream, right? So obviously we have the option of buying a house cash. We have the option of paying slowly until the, or rather uh, building it slowly as your money comes in. So maybe let's start with the, you know, the, the most uh, expensive option or rather the most very immediate option. And that is just waking up one day and buying a house cash. In your experience, how easy is it for someone to do that? To be honest, Cash buyers are there mm -hmm. in the market, yeah. but they are far and in between. Mm. Most Kenyans or most ordinary people are not able to afford cash. Yeah. So that's why people go for building, for mortgages and loans or taking SACO, small, small payments mm. and what they call the rent to purchase. Yeah. So that's why the conversation on property financing comes in mm. because mm. it allows you to get in, to get the house mm. and then pay it in yeah because i know interest. one of the most expensive if not the most expensive investment other than investing for retirement the most other expensive um, and major life decision we have to make is home ownership and how you are actually going to acquire a home so can we talk about financial planning mm -hmm. for home ownership when does someone know because like um in my nature of work we talk about financial planning in baby steps i'm okay. such a fan of baby steps yeah um so you want to look at it from the perspective of when a client comes to me and they're like i would want to buy a piece of land and own a home there are some things that i will look at to kind of like just be like okay if i if I want to own a home right now, am I ready to own a home? So what are we looking at? Number one, does this person have a consistent cash flow? Mm -hmm. Of course, because when you're dealing, whether you're going to be building the house slowly, you will still need consistent cash, mm -hmm. cash flow mm -hmm. until the project is over, right? Yeah. If you've taken financing in any way, you must fulfill your loan repayments. So cash flow is something that is very, very important mm -hmm. when someone is um, getting into that kind of like a commitment, yeah. right? We yeah. also look at whether you have other investments um, to just confirm that you've not taken all, all your money. eggs, yeah? You know, and, and put it all in real estate because we are also dealing with scenarios, especially like in the Kenyan community. Um, it's very easy to find someone who's very 
asset rich. Mm-hmm. In other words, they have land and they have like property, but they're very cash poor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So when things like an emergency comes up because you're very, you're not able to liquidate yeah. a whole house or a whole piece of land, you end up having to actually get into debt to meet like your day to day needs. Yeah. So there's that checklist that we usually look at. Right. Mm-hmm. So in your case, um, when a client comes to you and they would like to own a home, what are some of the financial planning discussions that you have with them to just ensure that that is the right decision for them. So if someone is watching us right now and they want to know, at what point do I know I'm ready? It's um, basically what you're saying. You don't want to be, or you don't want to engage a client that's already just, that's the first investment they're getting into. You don't so want it, it to be, be like the, it's first, not the first investment, investment you've ever done in your life. No, it, yeah. it can't be because like mm. you're saying, it's always wise to have diversified mm. uh, investments. Mm. And um, a lot of us think the moment I'm married and I have children, that's the point I want to get a mortgage or a house. And it's a very emotional <laughs> it's, decision. It's, it's a like a, a rite of passage. Yes, so yes. I marry, I get children, yes. I and probably I a buy a car. Yeah. And then the next thing is, a home. Fence and a home. Yeah. And usually that's not how it works out for everybody mm. because at the point when you're married and children and probably you haven't done all your other investments or you haven't diversified your income, mm. you don't have a consistent um, source, salary yeah. source of uh, income like you're saying mm. because this type, this kind of financing mm. is long term, mostly Very long because term. it's a large purchase. Yeah. So it takes a long time. So mm. you have to have some sort of guaranteed income we're Mm -hmm. not saying you need to be permanent and pensionable because we know we've moved from that kind of thinking Mm. but you need to have the type of um income that you can always it's consistent you can rely on so guaranteed i i love this sorry to interrupt you but i love what you've just said mm -hmm. a guaranteed source of income yes because the moment you get into a financing agreement it's monthly yes it is long term. Mm-hmm. And so with or without a job, whether the business is doing well or not, not. with or without economic fluctuations, sure. you're still required to honor your, your obligations. Payments. Yes, yeah. you still have your obligations. So you yeah. must always have that at the back of your mm. mind. At least usually the the tenors or the terms for such loans mm. take up to 15, 20 years. Yeah. So it doesn't mean you have to pay for that length of time, mm-hmm. but you at least have to have that. You have to be in a stable place. So among the things you must think about, and mm. I like that you mentioned mm. consistent income, yeah. but you also need to, men- to think about building um, down what what we call down payment mm. a deposit yeah. before you come to a financial advisor or a bank or whoever is going to fund your project mm. you need to have come up with your end of the bargain mm. which we call the down payment mm-hmm. or the deposit mm. so you can be building that up for maybe five years it could be a 10 million mortgage you need 1 million or 2 million as down payment mm. considering who you're working with yeah so you have to have built that up put it somewhere it can be through investment um, Mm. asset classes maybe a money market fund a high yield interest savings account you have to have that and you need to prove that to yourself Mm. then you also need to think when I'm getting a home am I planning to stay in this area how long am I planning to stay here is it five years or am I I going to relocate is it 10 years is it my retirement is it my retirement home Because you don't want to buy, then suddenly in two years' time, you're Mm. relocating to the United States. Mm. Then you have to now start looking, how am I going to sell this off? Am I going to get a tenant? Am I, you know, you don't want that. Yeah. So you have to think about that. You also Mm. have to think about the maintenance of the home because it comes with expenses. Do you know, now that you've raised that um, conversation, there's something I'd like you to clarify for us because you've mentioned maintenance costs. Mm -hmm. I've found that when I talk to a lot of people who are really, really, really into home ownership and they feel like even if they don't do anything else, this is what they must do. It is because they do not want to have, let's say, like monthly costs, for example, rent 
to think about. And I found that a lot of us ignore the realities of being a homeowner. Mm -hmm. You may not be paying the 20, 30,000 mm -hmm. in rent yeah. every month, but like now you are the landlord. You see how you call your landlord when the um, plumbing is not working right yeah. or when you've noticed a crack on your bathroom or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. Now you're the landlord. You That's call okay. you whenever things go wrong. Yeah. And with homes, just like anything else, there's wear and tear. Absolutely. Right? It falls so I've down, actually yeah. found that, that the cost, the monthly maintenance, it may not be monthly, but the regular maintenance of the home is something I found a lot of us ignore. Before. So we feel like, oh, I just have to put up this structure, move in with my family, and I no longer have to worry about like a roof over my head or the expenses. Uh, and, and that's something that I don't know whether you, you clarify that for your clients. Do, is there a way to estimate that this kind of a home would require X amount of money for maintenance every quarter, every semi-annually? Is there such a, a way to look at it? There is, there, there are actually ways to do that. Mm. And I'm actually fascinated by the fact that I don't know where we get that thing of we, you don't have to pay anything after you buy after a home. After that, or after, whether, you build, after you build. Or, yeah. I don't know whether, whether we got that from our parents. I'm not sure. But <laughs> because there's always, you, you have to pay garbage, you have to pay security, you yeah. have to pay utility bills. There's a lot that happens. Mm. And all this, some of them are even just, you might have to repair a roof. You might have to repair. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things mm. wear and tear, like you mentioned. Then there's also taxes. There's people have to pay land Property rates. Property taxes. Exactly. exactly. You have to pay land rates. Yeah. And these are annual. So you may not think of it as a monthly Cost, expense but, there but are it adds costs, up yeah. yeah eventually it adds up mm. so we must the person must also think about maintenance mm. yeah mm -hmm. and also now when they get into let, let's say a financing arrangement with a financial institution or whatever mm. there are the things that come along with that these insurances mm -hmm. and insurances are annual and sometimes they if you're you're funding a big project yeah. the insurances can be quite hefty yeah so people don't think about that when they're thinking, and these are annual, until you pay off the until mortgage. The day, and some of these arrangements are very, very long term. Now, before we jump the gun, yeah. I want us to mention these financing options that mm -hmm. are available. So let's assume I am not Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. I cannot buy a house cash. What are the options available for financing? I know we hear of mortgages, but mm. before we get into mortgages, what are the other, like, because you're a financing expert, if I come to you, I've spotted a home or a house that I'm interested in. Can you take me through the process of just understanding the options available for mm -hmm. financing home ownership? Okay. So when you go to, for example, take for instance, you go to a developer mm -hmm. who's selling a house. Usually they give you options of cash. Mm -hmm. Or prop, uh, uh, what they call payment schedule, mm, where a you're payment told, schedule, yes, yeah. uh, yes, where you're so you pay like a pay, deposit, then, and then you in a pay couple slowly. of months, yeah. they tell you in three months, pay this much, mm. in four, six months, pay this much. Mm. So there's that. So if you have that capacity, mm. you probably don't have the money up front, but you, there's a way you know how to what you need to liquidate. Mm. Then you can take that option. Mm. There's also the option of rent to purchase. Some people actually allow you to come in, rent. start living, yes, yeah, start and then living, like occupy rent the to house, buy. then you rent to buy. Mm. So there's also that. Yeah. Then comes other options like construction. Mm. You buy the piece of land, mm. you go to the bank. They help you build what they call buy and build. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Whole construction. Loads. Yeah. So if I buy a piece of land, yeah. I can actually go to a bank yes. of my choice and be like, okay, yes. Yes. Uh, but I need, <laughs> I yes, need, I need, find. I need them to build for me. So mm -hmm. what happens in this case? Do I hand over ownership of the, what's the security in this? So sense? the security, and I must mention before we even go further, mm. that it's always wise or good to, to enlist the services of a professional mm -hmm. before you get into a buy and build um, situation. Mm -hmm. Because as much as banks are willing to lend to you yeah. based on your land, mm. they also have their own policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. They can be like, maybe we don't finance Kamulu. Maybe we only finance. They have their own jurisdictions. Uh -huh. So you uh -huh. must, before you, you sink in your money into a, yeah. some piece of land, you need to have the back the background. 
you also need to do, there's a lot of due diligence that goes into, you know how our land issues are yeah. in this country? Yeah. So banks also want to protect themselves. So if you're looking at an option where you're going to do financing, mm. it's good to enlist the help of a professional mm. before you go mm. in. Shouldn't that be like the first thing I do? Yes. No? Yes. Because I, I feel like, again, um, again, I coach, like, for example, people mm -hmm. in personal finance. Mm -hmm. And every day I'm training people on matters, budgeting, investing. Someone is like, I've seen this investment. What do you mm -hmm. think of it? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've learned is that, and I, I think we've said this on this podcast mm -hmm. since we started, that, and, and that's why we are doing the Smarter Tomorrow podcast, because it's about understanding the value of financial literacy right? Understanding that investing in this financial literacy could save me a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm actually thinking about it from the perspective of real estate, we are mm -hmm. not talking thousands. Mm -hmm. We are not talking hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. We are talking millions. millions. So Yanni, me losing millions, the fine line there is whether I had literacy mm -hmm. or, or not. not. It's you quite... know, and there's also something that you mentioned about it being a very emotional decision. So I also feel that in between the excitement and I've found that a lot of us want to surprise our friends and surprise our family oh, yeah. members. So you're not even <laughs> consulting. You're not asking, OK, um, company XYZ has this particular package where if I have a piece of land, they can come build for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you you don't ask. Mm -mm. You go straight ahead. And then, of course, you know, we move in silence. Mm -hmm. You don't tell people your business. <laughs> you want to shock. You want shock to shock. Factor. Imagine. Mm. And you end up shocking yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Quite easily. And and um, yeah. and you want to also, you almost want to stay ahead of the pack. So if you're in a group of friends, you want to be the first one to get there. Yeah. So you go about it in this way, shrouded in mystery. Mm. But it's such a wrong way to go about yeah. it. You really need to invest a bit mm. of your time. In and getting, in getting the knowledge, to, yeah. yeah, in getting the the, the accurate knowledge, mm, and mm. also just being able to look out for the pitfalls so that you're able to guide, guide yourself, sure, you know. Sure. So because land is a very emotive issue in this country, mm. basically property. Yeah, is property. It's it's, it's very, very, emotive. Yeah, very... It touches close to the heart, mm. family, you know, your loved ones. Yeah. So you have to almost like stop yourself from thinking with your heart and put your thinking cap on. Exactly. Before you get into Logic. this investment. It's yeah. very emotional. You know yeah. why? I also feel that it's because home ownership and having a roof over your head mm. has been equated to security. Exactly. If you talk to a lot of like family heads, mm -hmm. men, yeah. th that's all they want to do yeah. for their families because mm -hmm. you, the biggest fear anyone ever has, even when you lose your job or when your business is not going very well, is how am I going to make rent? It is. Yeah, right? Is. So yeah. because of that, Home ownership is so emotional because sometimes we don't even think because mm -hmm. you're just thinking, no, I just need a roof over my right. family's head. Yeah. I just need no one to ever come knock on my door yeah. and tell me, um, you know, we, you know, the talk any, yeah, 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 because you, you don't have rent, right? So, and yeah. I think because of that, we, we don't take enough time to even consider, is this the right decision for mm -hmm. me? Is this the right way to finance this? In fact, is it even the right time exactly. for me to do that? Just earlier on, I was having a conversation here with one of us and I was trying to explain to them why for me, the aspect of like getting into very long-term um, agreements for home ownership is something I would move very slowly Sorry. on, right? Why? Because, so we were looking at an example of um, if I had like 4.5 million um, in sunk in a property that a piece of land ETC, and this is like the first thing, the first investment, just what we've discussed I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. And compare that to if that money was invested elsewhere. And I feel like what you're saying is that you see, People, money is emotional, mm -hmm. right? And we cannot ignore the psychology mm -hmm. of money, which is why we need to provide the literacy mm -hmm. for someone to be able to make that decision from a point of information, information. right? True. So there's the aspect of, okay, we are we get that you want a house. You've been told that that is the only thing, the best investment you can ever make is to, <laughs> is to have a roof home. over your head. Mm -hmm. But we were, we were actually earlier on just comparing 
4.5 million in a property mm -hmm. that does not um, generate an income for mm -hmm. you or is not saving money for you. Um, and 4.5 million may be in an investment like a bond that would give you close to like 60,000 every month, month in passive income, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when you say it's emotional, I get it because there's someone who does not even care for that passive income, income. at all. Yes. Like they just want a roof over their yes. head. And yes. that's okay because yes. we are all allowed to make those financial yes. decisions. But as long as it's from a point of information. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned... Um, so, so far, what I'm learning from you, what I'm picking up is A, understanding where you are financially mm -hmm. and whether this is like confirming that this is not the only and the first investment you're making, right? Sure. Number two, something very important you've said is if you're going to go the financing way, so whether you're going to take a loan from a circle, whether you are going to, um, you know, get into an off-plan agreement, mm -hmm. you want to ensure you have a guaranteed source of income, income. because now uh, there's trouble if you cannot yes. meet your obligations, obligations right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The third thing I think that you've mentioned that is very, very important is under enlisting mm -hmm. the help of a professional, yeah. which I know that is what you do, yeah. right? Um, in terms of like negotiating very good rates. Now, mm -hmm. most of these circles and banks or financing institutions will most probably use the mortgage way mm -hmm. of financing real estate. Sure. So I'd like us to just narrow in on mortgages. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I know you're a professional in that field, but like if you visit Twitter once every so often... <laughs> <laughs> there is, there are people who believe that taking out a mortgage in Kenya is one of the 100 ways to die. <laughs> like, I kid you not. It, it really is. Wow. According to Twitter. Yes. So now because we have a professional on set yeah. today, yeah. why do people think that way? Because I think the long-term um, long arrangement or commitment Yeah usually makes people fear. It's driven by a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. And also, maybe some have gone through yeah. a process where they've seen people go into, you know, like if you miss out on the first initial steps we were talking about, mm -hmm. they go into really bad debt. Mm. It can become bad. Yeah. And it's very traumatic for most people. Because people have been traumatized. I've, I've seen people losing homes. Yeah. I've heard of stories where someone is trying to negotiate the um let's say like the monthly payment down yes. and the bank completely like let's say i've lost my job today mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. i was supposed to be paying eighty thousand, yeah. but i can't even pay 20 yeah. you know so yeah. those are the scenarios that people are finding themselves in yes. and it's like mm -mm. if i was in another life i would never go the mortgage way but then i've also met people who swear by mm -hmm. mortgages mm -hmm. they have their first home their second home through mortgaging and they've been able to um, make that work. So I'd like us to talk about mm -hmm. how do I get that to work for me? Yeah. Circles are now providing mortgages, mm -hmm. bank institutions, microfinance are, are, are they're, they're, they're actually giving out mortgage facilities. Okay. Yeah. So can you take me through the process of the due diligence? Mm -hmm. How, what should I be on the lookout for? What information must I have so that I can like have all the data mm -hmm. to make a wise investment or rather to make a wise decision in mm -hmm. terms of taking out a mortgage credit facility. Okay. Yeah. So you're right. So many people in my lifetime, mm. I have seen as an independent, as a consultant in the finance yeah. world, have taken mortgages, they've paid off and they've taken second mortgages. Yeah. Now they're using them as they are real estate moguls. As, exactly. <laughs> yeah. People are doing Airbnb, sh you know, short-term exactly. rentals because they bought two more apartments. Mm. It's because of what you set out to do. Mm. What is your goal? Mm. What is? Uh, have you gotten enough of the information, accurate information that you need to make that decision? Yeah. So some of the things to look out for is how is my you know, my long-term earning capacity. Uh, How long am I going to be in this? Even if I lose a job, so can I quickly... Before, even before you go to the institution, yes, do you self need to do self-evaluation. That's very deep. important. Like that. You need to have done your self-assessment. Yeah. Set, find out exactly what you... Is it your first mortgage? Is it your home? Is mm. it for investment? Mm. What are you planning? Mm. Then 
do I have the earning capacity? How old am I as well? Yeah. To to make this investment. Mm. Should I Is start? it better when you're younger or when you're mid-age or when you in your experience what have you observed? In my experience around 30s mid 30s that mm. has worked for most guys. That's when they are earning the amount of money or they've at least um honed their skills in their profession. So you Such have that some you level lost. of stability. Exactly. So if you even yeah. lo- lose your job, say God for- mm. God forbid, mm. you're quickly able to Either get another, get another one, one or get into another. Or you already have like a side hustle. Exactly. That so, you I, already yeah. have also investments that or an emergency fund that can sustain you. Mm. So you must think about these things before you get into it. So yeah. there's that. And then a lot of due diligence when it comes to buying the right property uh, yeah. for you. Mm. Yeah, mm. You need to know who, where is it? Will I be there for 10 years, mm-hmm. 15 years? Mm. Um is it amongst the land, the properties that the government of Kenya has not claimed as their own? You know, there's so many. Um, it's such a wide subject. Yeah. I don't know how to narrow it down. Yeah. But yeah. there's a lot so of... So confirm that you're not buying money. property that has issues. Exactly. How do, you, how do you do that? Can you can you just break it down in, okay, should I go to the Ministry of Lands? Okay. Should I... Get, talk to a land surveyor? Should I get some maps? How do you confirm that the property is legit? Okay. So we have what we call the legal Mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And uh, even before you get into an agreement, sign off a purchase or a sale Mm -hmm. agreement, you need to ask for the documentation, a copy of the title, the purchase agreement. So you understand ownership. Exactly. The ownership structure. Exactly. Mm. And that can be done for you by, they're very good lawyers. Mm. Con- we call them conveyancing, conveyancing lawyers, lawyers. And they go through, they can do that for you, trusted ones. So don't okay. be out here, mm-hmm. uh, James, bonding the whole <laughs> thing on your own. Or relying on you the can, buyer, on the yeah, seller to give the you seller, all the information. Do your own you need due to diligence. go and do your independent due, due diligence. diligence. Yeah. And list the help of professionals. Mm. Again, the real estate market or the land we have we know what goes the on. landscape is full of scammers let's exactly. be honest so yeah. we know what so goes you on to, yeah. you need as much as possible to get your legal mm. uh, do the search get the search report if you have yeah. to the yeah. lawyers can help you with this mm. i myself have my own people that i can help you with yeah. there's also valuation you mm. need to get i don't know we call them valuers mm. here mm. somebody to go and do a research, like do the valuation so that also you're not being upstaged exactly. by the seller. So if the property yeah. is listed for 20 million, mm-hmm. you want someone to actually evaluate Wait. for you yes. and confirm that it is worth That's that, that much. amount so that you're not yeah. being over overcharged. I it. hear you. Yeah. How do you now, let's assume you've done, you've done due diligence on your end. Mm-hmm. How do you choose a mortgage partner? Mm-hmm. So how do I decide I'm going to go with Sako X, mm-hmm. Bank Y, mm-hmm. Microfinance Z, mm-hmm. right? What should I look out for in a good mortgage? Like what would you term as a good mortgage partner? A good mortgage partner is a partner that's upfront with the information. Mm-hmm. They're good with customer service because remember, this commitment is a very big commitment. It's a, and long term. And long term. Mm. So you need to have a bank that walks with you in that journey. Mm-hmm. You don't need a bank where you call or a microfinance or a circle and they don't respond to you. Mm. Or if you have an issue, no one is talking to you yeah. or it's taking too long. Mm. So you need that handholding. It's basically a very, I, for lack of a better term, it's an intimate relationship, relationship. and very long term. Yes, it's 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 about to last longer than some marriages. Exactly. Precisely, <laughs> you're so probably gonna pay. You're probably gonna pay the mortgage longer than you'll be married. I'm That's telling sad. you, it's emotive <laughs> yeah. and it's intimate. Yeah. So you need somebody, a situation where the bank or institution mm. is hand holding you through the process because again it has a lot of moving parts yeah the process is not mm. Mm. everybody has wanjiko you'll have your own journey uh mary i will have my own, own journey, journey because all of yeah. us have different financial circumstances yeah. and financial muscle mm. you know mm. and capacities mm. so we have you have to get a bank that 
that's the one major thing I must yeah. say. Before you even and start is looking... it observable from the word go? So let's say we've started discussions yeah. and whatnot, and I'm realizing that these people have a problem with picking calls. Mm-hmm. They have a problem with giving me feedback. I've been asking for this information. Yes. Before you get yourself into yes. it, just ask yourself if this is how it looks and they're trying to co- close me as a client. How, how about now be? when I actually owe them? When I'm changing yeah. jobs and I can't find anyone to yeah. help me move the mortgage yeah. into the new salary mm. sleep. It, it gets very frustrating. Oh. So you need a relationship yeah. bank, so to speak. And yeah. it's very easy to tell, like you're saying. Mm. If you feel from the outset, even just getting the application done is taking is a forever. problem, then yeah. that's a red flag then a red you need flag to be aware you. of. You need to, to be aware of because mm. it's going to be a painful process for you sure. because it's too long. Yeah. It's very long. Sorry, not too long, mm. but it's very it's, long. And quite it's engaging mm. mentally and emotionally. Can we talk about the elephant in the room? Mm-hmm. The fees. Starting from, like, it's, it's, there are too many hidden fees, sometimes I feel, in the mortgage process. People just look at interest, right? And we are going to talk about the interest because I also feel like part of looking for a good mortgage partner is getting someone who's willing to, how do you negotiate interest rates? Because one of the things that I've learned works very well in negotiating is getting different options, right? So I go to institution X, institution Y, institution Z, get the different offerings, negotiate them to as low as they can get. Mm-hmm. And then maybe I can use one of this uh, very low rates or reasonable rate to negotiate mm-hmm. another partner down, right? So is it is it, how easy or not is it to negotiate? Because I've also had that Um, the real estate industry has quite a big profit margin. Mm -hmm. So how negotiable are these interest rates? And of course, even as you talk about the interest rates, can you please talk to us about the fees that we should inquire about? Like Mm -hmm. what are, what percentage, how much money am I paying on any other thing that's not interest? Because we all, we pay for more Mm -hmm. than just the Interest. interest. Yeah. You're very right. And, um, as with any loan, everybody just thinks mm. of the interest rate yeah. at first, mm. nothing else. Mm. But um, there are many hidden, not hidden, but there are fees that may not be disclosed by everybody, but yeah. they're there and they're in the public domain. Mm. So it is possible to negotiate your interest rates with your bank, depending on how long you've banked with them, mm-hmm. how, what kind of a relationship Have you maintained your credit score or credit worthiness Mm. over time? Mm. You can use that kind of, and your relationship to negotiate your interest. Mm. So it must have been a bank Mm -hmm. that you have have banked with, worked with, and been with for a while yes. because that also like has already created a relationship a trust a rapport, relationship yeah yes. and and some credit worthiness yes mm. yes usually mm. that works best when you had some sort of past really, relationship yes. and you have borrowed perhaps you've even borrowed and paid. personal loans paid you have a credit card you're a good pair mm. all the things that are factors to a good credit score so, so that would probably give me more bargaining power, power. Yes. than someone who just decided, oh, yes. let me start banking with Bank Y yes. and, you know, start They're still getting... testing you. They don't yeah. know you because lending is a factor, is a, the, the primary factor in lending or in borrowing mm. is character. Yeah. The bank or your financial lender needs to know who you are, your mm. character, your behaviors. Mm-hmm. That's what they're lending to. Mm. They're lending to you the character yeah. of who you are. So if you haven't had that relationship, you probably will get the highest. You appear as a high risk mm-hmm. client, you are. so we'll charge you exactly a higher interest. until you prove yourself otherwise. Mm. Then we can we can discuss. Yeah. But in the meantime, you're coming in fresh mm. out of the uh, oven kitchen. Yeah. You have to be. You have mm. to be vetted, and mm. that's a risk. So okay. your your charges, man. But mm. there's all there's room for negotiation. Okay. You could negotiate the interest rate, but I also maybe should have mentioned you could also have negotiated with the buyer, mm-hmm. with the seller, sorry, mm-hmm. on the price. On the price. Based on what your due diligence got mm. you. 
mm. perhaps the valuation say this this house is here not 20 million they're 19 or you know mm. you could use based on that yeah maybe those is are, that something you help your clients yes, with negotiating with both the seller yes, yes. and the financial yes, institution yes i mm. do and um i have professionals even valuers who have worked with in the past mm. and they are able to assist in to such assist. scenarios okay so that's that's something that's you should true. also think about yeah. you need to negotiate way before you come into the to the financing bit and then you also need to negotiate at the financing bit it's also always good to look at this thing and maybe this is why people may think a certain such a such a bank is giving the lowest interest rate because that's what we always look at but you don't go back to check but well, what are they origination fees or processing fee or negotiation fee. The, those are now the hidden yes. fees. Yes. Um, usually, I don't want to say hidden because they're not hidden. They're usually in your contract when you're signing off. But we don't read contracts. <laughs> you all know we don't read. We, we, and don't, we do know you don't read contracts. We don't read those things. We do know you don't read contracts. Which is where the rubber meets the road for <laughs> yes, most people. Yes. I hear you, man. So I could be giving you, say, for purposes of this discussion mm. 17% mm-hmm. and then another bank is giving you 20% or 19% but my origination fee is 3% the other bank at 19% the origination fee is, is included 1%, or maybe even, or even less yeah so do your math there's a there's some math that needs to happen mm. okay they say they they usually the origination or negotiation fee mm. is one off mm. You pay off, you pay it the moment your application is approved. So it's like 1% of the yeah. 20 million worth of properties. Yes. What's yes. origination fee in English? Okay. <laughs> Do you realize that's jargon. I want to call it the or management fee. Mm. The fee that you pay the bank for doing the processing of your paperwork, mm. going mm. through assessing your your eligibility for the loan, mm. how much they are paying the relationship manager for coming to meet you and Ooh. do the paperwork so it's with like you. Administration exactly. Fee. Okay. Actually that's the that's the word. Mm. M- many banks will call it negotiation fee, mm-hmm. others will call it processing fee, others call it origination, origination fee. For processing all fee, means the same fac- thing it's all the same thing okay because you actually pay it up front mm. the moment your loan is approved your mm-hmm. paperwork has gone through before it goes into now the system of what we call conveyancing yeah. or the lands and all of that yeah so that's origination fee mm-hmm. so we don't think much about that but those are other costs that come along with a sure. mortgage so there's that there's insurances you have to pay for mortgage protection basically you, the person who's borrowing, mm-hmm. if something happens to you. Or to my source of income. Yes, or to your source of income. Mm. There's an insurance to pay for that. Yeah. Then there's also insurance on the building. Mm-hmm. What if it catches fire? Oof. You know? Yeah. There has to be uh, insurance that covers that. And so all of this is money I am paying. Yes. That's that's when I'm now paying like the principal plus yes. interest. Yes. The fees have also been like added onto there. Mm, usually most banks, I'll tell you, mm. that you just pay for the principal and the interest. Then you're left to pay for the insurances once a year. Mm. So perhaps you pay. So that's an additional cost, cost on top on of the mortgage yes. payment. And that's what I was saying. It's a maintenance fee, fee. that you need to have sort of like an account where you're thinking at the end of year, yeah. I need to pay 120,000 worth of insurance on mm-hmm. my mortgage. Sure. And so I, that's I, something I think else. I love that you've highlighted that because then that would also mean mm-hmm. that part of your financial protection on yeah. top of that mortgage insurance mm-hmm. could also be an emergency fund mm-hmm. for men like or rather again it's like how why do we have emergency funds in personal finance mm-hmm. we have emergency funds because things happen and people lose jobs people lose um their ability to make an mm-hmm. income even if you're working in your own business yeah like if today you are unwell you're not able to meet a client which yeah. means you're not able to make, to make money. money if that goes on for a month or many months mm-hmm. then we're in trouble exactly. right exactly so does that then go to say that you should also consider, I think you should consider having an emergency fund that can finance payment of these obligations, whether you have an income, income or, or not. not. Precisely. That's Oof. what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. when you're thinking about a mortgage, you must think of that side mm, account as well. My, my emergency fund sure. for such things, yeah. for your insurances. Mm. 
those are the maintenance ones. Mm. But there's also the other fees that come along. I know you said hidden fees. Mm. They're not really hidden, but they're there. Mm. So there's a legal fees that comes along with the whole process mm-hmm. in terms of registration fees that you have to pay the government um, of Kenya. Yeah. There's also the taxes, mm. property taxes. Mm. There's also the transfer, stamp duty. So all this, you right. need to think about. It's not just the 20 million that you're going to it's be more than that. There's going to be more or the yeah. 10 million. But all this can be handled with good financial planning. With good financial planning. I and going you. in knowing what you're what getting exactly into. What exactly you're Because in my experience, I found that a lot of people got, got agitated at the point where they realized, oh no, you mean I needed to pay insurance after a year? I thought I was done when I paid last year when I got the mortgage. That was lack of information, information. was not relayed to them right. at the beginning. And then they, they, they're they hit with, you need to pay your land rent and your land rates. So Do I this... start paying the taxes? That's mm-hmm. a very important question right mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Do I need to pay start paying property taxes or land taxes before I finish my mortgage? It's an yearly thing, especially if you you have to pay land rates and yeah. land, land, land rent. Mm. Those are yearly things. So the moment I start you paying my mortgage, because you've owned like it. I, I now own it, it's yes. just that I'm paying slowly yes. for it. Yes. All the obligations that come with it are yours. Are mine, yes. not the bank's. Nope. In fact, Oof. usually the bank will call you mm-hmm. every March of every year or mm-hmm. around that time. They yeah. have an annual anniversary to remind you Please share your <laughs> land rate receipts. Oh, to ensure that you've actually you've actually done it. paid them. Oh, I hear you. This this is such an amazing conversation, but we yeah. have to bring it to an end. Yeah. Maybe the last question I would have mm-hmm. is what happens when life happens. Mm-hmm. So let's assume I've been doing my work, I've paid my mortgage um, payments every month, I'm good on the land uh, the land rates, everything, right? but I lose my job. I'd like you to very quickly just address what are the options of someone who loses income? Are there ways to negotiate with your financial um, institution? Mm -hmm. What are the options um, before I end up losing my home? Mm -hmm. Um, Because sometimes life happens, right? Mm -hmm. So what are the options available that people should know are there? Okay. So you want to, first of all, the moment that happens, Mm -hmm. life happens, you you lose your job. Mm -hmm. You have to, as soon as possible, mm-hmm. inform the financial institution that you're in, that you're in a mortgage arrangement with. Mm. Ask for what they call, um, forget it, uh, refinancing. Mm-hmm. You can get into a situation where mm-hmm. the bank will allow you. They'll send a relationship manager, or you will go yourself to the bank mm-hmm. and tell them, "I've lost my job." Mm-hmm. They'll ask you, "How much are you able?" Maybe you are paying eighty thousand or forty. How much are you able to continue paying for this loan? Mm. Maybe you're able to do 20. They are open to have discussions. As long as you're upfront and honest, have discussions with them. They could lengthen the, the, their ways of refinancing. Mm. They could lengthen the your period, your period to, lower to lower your repayment. Yeah. You could possibly have a negotiation on interest rate mm. to reduce that. So you can have those conversations. Again, there are mortgages or there are uh, mortgages that have the insurance that has that retrenchment mm, clause, mm. whereby it covers your job loss, maybe yeah. for six months or more. Mm. So you're like, I need you're to... You're covered. You yes, have a buffer. So you, you should have a not buffer. ignore the insurance. No, 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 no. Mm. Don't always... Because you never know. Life happens, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah. So it might be time to invoke that. like, mm. And the bank will do that. Mm. Once, but the thing is to have the conversation so open communication communication. is very important i know mostly job losses come with shame and all of that and people avoid talking about them you want to hold yourself up in the house and never come out yeah but not when you have such obligations so talk to them talk to them there's always room to renegotiate there's always room to renegotiate to refinance Mm. you can even just decide maybe this other bank is offering a better rate and that's why i come in as an independent Mm -hmm. advisor i'm able to tell you maybe here it's too high and you've tried to negotiate, it's not working. Mm. Let's try here. We'll mm-hmm. have a better rate. We could move it because banks buy off each other's mortgages yeah. all the time. Yeah. So depending on what your circumstances are at, at that point. Mm-hmm. And of course, 
I mean, once, but it's always good to stay with one because once you reestablish your income, then you continue the relationship. You continue with them. Yeah. Okay. But most banks are willing to listen. But people, in my experience, people that go underground and disappear and hide. Without communicating. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I totally it gets hear really you, man. messy. It, it, it gets, gets messy. Really and messy. that's one of the things we also say in personal mm-hmm. finance. When mm-hmm. you owe money yeah. and something happens to your income mm-hmm. or your source of income, yeah. the first and the most important people to communicate that to are your creditors. Yes. Because sometimes... You think there's not going to be options for you, but, but there are. are. Wow, a Mary, thank you so much. I've learned so much about mortgages. I still feel that there's so, so much more room to, oh, ne- yeah. um, to discuss and to learn. But guys, I hope as you've been watching this episode, you've picked up a thing or two that you can start thinking about or even start applying. You can always reach out to professionals like Mary. We are going to leave her details in the episode notes. Um, maybe be a phone number or an email address that you can use to reach out to her. You could also reach out to SBM Bank to learn and understand their mortgage proposition. It's an amazing offer. It's a bank that you can work with and that you can trust to ensure that you can achieve your dream of home ownership without getting, um, you know, scammed in any way or the other. There's transparency and there's definitely um, the you know, um, availability of professionals that you can work with. So I really hope that you loved and enjoyed this episode. As long as you are a home ownership enthusiast, you can always let us know. Thank you so much for joining us. And I will see you on the next episode of the Smarter Tomorrow podcast. Mm-hmm.